Hey there! Welcome to the Winx Forever podcast. Join creator, host, and lifelong Winx fan Lola Valentine as she invites you to take a deep dive into the very cool universe of Winx Club. So, whether you've been a Winx Club fan since 2004, or you vaguely remember the show from your childhood, or even if you're being introduced to it for the first time, welcome. This is the Winx Forever podcast. Hello fellow Winxlers, welcome back to another episode of the Winx Forever Podcast. I'm your host, Lola Valentine, and we are taking a break this week from our season one rewatch to bring you a very special podcast episode today because we are being joined by the one and the only Karen Tackett, who is the original four kids Winx Club voice actress for Stella and Darcy and Myrta and hey. Chata. So <laughs> did I miss anybody? <laughs> no, you did not. That covers it. Oh man, I couldn't be more thrilled to have you on the podcast, Karen. Oh, Thank my you gosh. so much. Thank you so much for having me. Oh my gosh, it's been such a great trip down memory lane. And it's I'm just I was geeking out as soon as you asked me. I was so excited. Just asked my husband and my daughter. <laughs> Amazing. Oh my gosh, that makes that makes my heart so happy. Um because because it was literally like I'd found um, I had like, I don't remember even what happened, but I remember finding your Instagram account. And so I just got a wild, like on a whim, like, a, you know, last week or so I was like, what if I just asked her, you know, <laughs> just, like, about this fairy show she voiced like, you know, 18 years ago. Ages um. <laughs> ago. Oh, it just feels like lifetimes ago, but it made me yeah. so happy to get that message. I was like out in the middle of the farm with goats and I just got your message and was like, what? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm so happy to be here. Oh, man. I love that so much. Well, you are a woman of many, many talents and gifts. I mean, not only are you a former Broadway and world touring performer, um, you are also my favorite voice actress for our beloved Stella. Oh, my um, goodness. Thank you so much because there have been so many and they're all really good. So that means a lot. They are. But like, it's just something about Four Kids Stella, like so iconic. It's what I grew up with. <laughs> I am very, very biased, but oh, I love that. I love that you love Stella so much. She was a riot. So much oh fun to my do. Gosh. So much yes. fun. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. But um, but you're also a writer and a musician and a falconer and oh, a figure yeah. skating coach and I a mother know. and a wife. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> my gosh. It's a lot. It's a lot of things. My goodness. It's a... Well, I'm, I'm old. <laughs> That means you get to do a lot. Well, that's exciting and, and inspiring to me because I also have a lot of passions and maybe way too many side projects. But like, that's encouraging it. to see that like someone that actually can do a lot of other things as well. I'm I like, get it. Great. Yeah, it takes it takes, you know, it just takes balance. But as I you know, as I look through this absolutely thorough outline that you gave me for this podcast, I can see that you like to compartmentalize and organize. And I do, Thank too. You. So as long as you can keep a structure, it's really easy. And I really credit show business for giving me that like, yeah, that really hardcore structure. Um, sure. Then it's easy to find that balance, especially when you can involve your family and everything. Our, my mm. family is the most important thing to me. And so we have a lot of mutual shared interests. Actually, yeah. Raven was in my belly for Winx Club. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really funny because my midwife used to say, now you're your child inside of you is going to get used to the sound of your voice. And I would think, oh, my God. Oh, like, no. Well. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> I know. She's going to be like, wow, who is this woman? <laughs> so funny. That is absolutely hysterical. I love that. <laughs> Well, I'd love to let our audience get the chance to kind of get to know you a little. And so let's just dive right. into it. Because, I mean, as All we right. mentioned, um, you were originally um, a stage actress. You were in the original <laughs> cast of Rent, which, amazing. Oh. Um, oh so <laughs> what um, what kind of got you into the voice acting side of things? Actually, it was a fellow cast member in Rent at the time, uh, Sebastian Arcellus, who was a swing there at the time that I was a also a swing. When I first started at Rent, I was uh, a swing is when you understudy multiple roles and can get thrown on at any mo moment, yeah. which is... Uh, it's oh my gosh, it's so exciting, and but it's absolutely mind numbing at the same time. You just have to be <laughs> I can prepared at, to do nothing and everything all at once. And uh, and Sebastian was doing 
uh, a show with four kids called Shaman King. And um, he was voicing the lead role in that. I forget what it was. I'm sure it was the Shaman King. But um, he uh, needed, a, they did auditions for a couple of roles in that uh, show and it was directed by Anthony Salerno and uh, so I got cast to do like Kana and Jean Iron Maiden in Shaman King and then Anthony got hired to do the Winx Club so he asked me if I wanted to audition and uh, they gave us the character breakdown and I auditioned for every role possible and Stella and Darcy were who we, we started off with and then as they uh, had more characters you know they just sort of threw them at all of us left and right it was real fun <laughs> right yeah because you were the only cast member that also got to voice a Winx member and a witch um oh Lisa gosh. Ortiz also mm -hmm. did Musa and Icy so like that's that was right. really fun yeah so and Digit fun. yeah so that's right really and cool. Digit <laughs> <laughs> amazing that's a, that's wild what would you say are some of uh maybe the differences and even similarities between voice acting and stage acting wow okay they are so huge okay voice acting is so intimate and i don't mean to say that stage acting isn't but i feel like when i'm on a stage the feeling that i have is that it's sort of this big cavernous place and you and you know and it fills up with people and even though you can't see them you know depending on the lighting they're definitely right. there and you're <laughs> all a part of this um process together i mean the audience is as much of a part of the creative process in the moment as the cast because you know you yeah. feed off of each other and so it's this real collective shared community driven experience and then when you go into to voiceovers you are in a i don't know a, maybe if you're lucky a four foot by four foot padded padded <laughs> cell of a room um yeah. you know with a microphone and a stool and maybe you know uh a music stand and and a script and it's and it's the world is is you and your mind and you just yeah. go within sort of instead of going without externally right. so yeah. um and then that microphone it's like as you know it just picks up everything every little <laughs> detail yeah. nothing everything. is left uh, you know and you know when you're singing live in the theater they can just sort of pack on that reverb i'm a big fan and uh and you can just <laughs> You could just sort of sail your way through sometimes, right. but uh, but intimacy in a recording studio, um, you, you and your engineer and your director, whew, it's all about that experience and you better be yeah. tight and trusting and, and have a good oh relationship with one another. So I, I think those are the main differences. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And maybe yeah. like um, what what are some of the similarities or, or things that you enjoy about um, each oh. one specifically? creativity i mean mm. whether you're in a cavernous theater filled with tons of people or uh, a, a four by four you know padded cell of a room <laughs> your imagination is the key, um, you know, and, and that is, oh my gosh, how Winx Club was that of me to say, but it's true. It's, it's so, it's like th th those characters, you know, they didn't come from anywhere, you know, they, yeah. the, the script was handed to us and, you know, we went into this room and, and the director is with you and you, you sort of just jive off of each other and try some things out and then he helps you shape it and and that's very similar to mm -hmm. to a ground up theatrical process you and your director um it's a little bit different also in that i with this experience um and this this uh voiceover experience was different than other voiceover experiences mm -hmm. where um we weren't all in the same room together so it was like there right. wasn't that like uh working off of each other with the characters sometimes yeah. i go in there and it would be like two of the voice actors had done their their sessions already but like five of them hadn't so you know you oh, gotta wow. like wait for that timing and stuff yeah. so um it, it's very it's similar in some ways and really different in a lot of ways yeah definitely mm -hmm. that's absolutely crazy yeah. um so so you kind of mentioned how you got involved with um four kids and with winx club you were also on shaman king mm -hmm. The, the four kids dub in Winx Club, and I'm not sure how aware <laughs> you are of this, but it, it is so unique. Um, and, it's prob <laughs> and it's probably the most creative dub we have in the whole Winx Club franchise because of all the ways that four kids edited the script and edited Ooh. the show. Mm -hmm. And it gives it 
kind of this really Americanized, you know, oh, like yeah. twist oh, to yeah. this original European show. Sure. <laughs> sure. And, and obviously, in my opinion, because I'm biased, like, and I grew up with it <laughs> <laughs> every Saturday morning, you know, um, mm-hmm. resulting in like this fun dialogue, the story that appeals to, I mean, honestly, like a larger audience, I feel. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, I would just love to know, like, what was the process <laughs> of recording the Wings Club episodes? I mean, you like you just said, like, you know, so some parts wouldn't even be recorded when you mm-hmm. go into the booth. Like that is oh, absolutely yeah. wild. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's a insane. riot because it's it's so much different than you know. Just like you said, because it's a European import, it had already been done. The 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 cartoons had already been designed and drawn and done, and so and they yeah. were not in English. So I mean, right. those <laughs> we were trying to fit. Oh God, we had so much fun. We would kill ourselves laughing, Anthony was a hilarious and creative director. He would have to sit there and really analyze, oh. you know, what that, what those mouth, you know, yeah. like sort of movements were the, and yeah. try real hard to fit in the best English sentence that may or may not sort of fit in there and, right. and also convey the plot, you know, accurately. Yeah, that helps so, make it make sense. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I really think he's got to be because we were not spoiled in that way where we could just go in, lock it in in the sound booth, really like yeah. play off of one another. And then the the animation is created. We had it we, and we had to work within it, which actually made it easier when right. that uh, to work with because we weren't all in the room together. So yeah. when I would go in you know let's pretend i had a scene with like myself and you know icy and maybe um sky you know Mm -hmm. and i don't know why but that's (laughs) that would be the scene (laughs) <laughs> the character amazing that would be a really awkward <laughs> scenario we wouldn't have much to say to each other but um but if like sky wasn't there what would what would happen is they queue up your line with three beeps and then a long beep so it would be like beep 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 and then you would and have to talk yeah, yeah. And, then, and then you go and so and you would really have to do it several times so that you could because sometimes you know i'd be saying the line and her mouth had stopped moving like 30 <laughs> seconds before i was done you know saying what the, the, so you'd have to like speed it up or slow it down and then right. or just rework the line entirely and we just mm. had so much fun i'm sure there are just there i'm sure there's hours of outtakes of me saying inappropriate things because i <laughs> It was just, it was such trial and error and it was just so much fun. I think if we had a different director, it, it could have been uh, a struggle, but a Anthony, lot different. Yeah. yeah, Anthony was a pretty brilliant guy. Oh, man, that would be amazing. I would love to get him on the show because I've, uh, yeah. I mean, truly like to have anyone like that worked on this, sh- on this specific version of Wings Club mm-hmm. is just a treat because it, the way that four kids took such um a already like pre-baked you know thing and kind of made it their own (laughs) like was just absolutely phenomenal and it and they did that that was kind of their rep in the entertainment you know cartoon Mm -hmm. space for at the time you know they did a lot of edits with pokemon they did a lot of edits with you know and took a lot of liberties with those sort of things Mm -hmm. um but in a way it's so special because it is it it just gives it a whole new (laughs) life and it's like it's it's so and it sort of has this like retro look about it too with like it just it's so funny i can't even put my finger on it and you can't really tell but um yeah. it just it definitely puts it in this nostalgic place of wow what were they trying to do okay <laughs> yeah. they, they got it done <laughs> absolutely it definitely absolutely. has a special place in my heart <laughs> amazing well you mentioned that you were actually um uh pregnant with raven um mm-hmm. in season three of winx club um is that <laughs> and you and feel free you, you don't want to answer this but um is that why in season three episode two there was a different actress for Stella and Darcy oh you know that's so funny I forgot all about that and I was reviewing <laughs> the uh like footage and stuff and yeah. Raven was just kind of like that's not you and I, <laughs> and I was like wait a minute, that's totally not me. What happened? And I had to think about it. But what happened was Rent had booked, I, I, I booked the role of Maureen for the tour of Rent that was going in Southeast Asia. And uh, oh. and so they, um, there was one episode that I could not record before going. And it was all out of order. That just, one, oh, does, yeah. that just happened to be, happened to be the one. And, and, and 
at first they were going to try to hire somebody else entirely to to do everything while I was oh, gone. Wow. But then yeah. um, they were really nice enough to put together a lot of episodes uh, ahead of time. And but there was one <laughs> that I didn't get to do. And it's so funny because I completely <laughs> forgot about it until right. you invited me to be on this <laughs> podcast. And, and it just brought back all these. I could not figure it out for the life of me. I was like, "What happened? Did I get hired for an episode for for and, an episode? <laughs> you know, like they were like, nah, not that one." Uh, okay. Yeah, I know, and it's so funny because, like, me as a nine year old, because that season two, the voice of Tecna was mm -hmm. altered slightly as well. I don't believe that the actress changed, but I think that her the the direction changed. I don't know, mm -hmm. but it's that so that voice was different and then episode two rolls in and then like Stella's completely different I was like what is happening I know oh my gosh that was so funny and it was my, of course my daughter she was like good ear good ear Reed. <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> I love it <laughs> So you mentioned that recordings were, were pretty solo. Did you, so you didn't get any group recordings ever with any um, other actors no, on the show? I did not get group oh. recordings, but oftentimes, uh, you know, if we had overlapping sessions, the actors would come in before or hang out for a little bit afterwards. Yeah. It was often the guys, uh, you know, who also were the voices of the four kids Ninja Turtles. So yes! I, they were yes! like the celebs and they oh, would come in 100%. and kind of be like, <laughs> You know, no, just really seasoned professionals. And, oh, yeah. You know, they were absolutely they, so nice. Actually, my favorite um, was, oh, gosh, Michael Center Nicholas. He is just fantastic. And he actually, I think, went on to become pretty well known in the anime uh, yeah world. yeah mega yeah. talented mega yeah, talented super. that's awesome and so oh. generous as far as like advice and and you know just great great guidance from both of those people oh, that's mm -hmm. so great i love to hear that <laughs> oh, fantastic um well we're gonna take a short break but before okay. we do i like to take um a, a minute in the in the podcast to um do a round of rapid fire questions with my guests Ooh, okay. um, <laughs> Where we ask you um, a question and you have to give us um, the first answer that comes to your head. So oh, are you no. ready? <laughs> okay. Gosh, All right. Please. No judgments. Okay, here we go. Rapid fire. All right. <clears throat> uh, who's your favorite Winx member? Uh, I, do you see how nothing's happening? Okay, wait. Who's my favorite Winx member? Like from the Winx Club? Yes. What? Damn it. The, okay, from, wait. From, we have to start over. Five start five over. Five All right. Blah, blah. <laughs> I'm not listening to that question. Okay, you're go good, ahead. You're good. Who's your favorite Winx member? I just keep coming up with Flora and you know, okay, go. That's great. All Flora. Right. Flora, all right, cool. I'm not none of my characters. <laughs> Who's your favorite season? Three. Okay, awesome. Um, your favorite specialist? Ooh, that's really good. Ugh, my favorite Red Fountain specialist? Why? <laughs> I'm upset with the name that came to my mind. It was, was it Riven. Riven. Oh. It was. That's okay. That's okay. We've it. all been there. Okay. <laughs> uh, to, to, <laughs> we'll, yeah. we'll keep going. Okay. <laughs> favorite favorite villain. Riven. <laughs> oh okay. Gosh. No, I'm gonna say um, I really liked uh, the the. Uh, the dark, dark, d d never. No, I'm gonna say Riven. I'm gonna stick with Riven. Riven. I like okay. because I think Riven is just as much of a good guy as he is a bad guy. Oh and yeah, especially like season that. one. I mean, stereotypical. Yeah. Wait a minute. For sure. The, I have another one that I'm okay. just thinking of, except for I can't remember his name. He's the long guy with the. He's the guy who always dressed in the white oh. suit with the long ponytail. Oh, the, of he oh was, oh he Avalon. Like this. And yeah. He very, yeah. Yes. He was a good villain. He was good. Yeah. What's your favorite transformation? Uh, um, I was not particularly a fan of the Charmix transformation yeah. because I felt like I, I liked the initial like Winx transformation. Yeah. I really thought it was authentic and legitimate. I, I think that Blooms is my favorite just because it was like she thought she was 
you know, an earthling. And so mm-hmm. that transformation in the very first episode, which like my voice doesn't even sound the same in the very, like it's like an octave lower almost in the first episode because I was still finding myself. Yeah. But the, the, but that particular transformation is my favorite. But I also, the, I know we're supposed to be doing rapid fire. I can't you're do good, rapid anything. Good. I talk for ages. Um, <laughs> The 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 Charmix one was my least favorite, and I feel like it was just done to introduce another product for people. Oh, one thousand percent! It was only to sell toys. Oh, I one hundred percent agree. To sell toys, <laughs> so I had a hard time getting behind it. But you know, we yeah. all just did it. We were like, okay, Charmix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever. Cool. Yeah, I know. And there's, I could go on a rant about how, yeah, but we won't go there, but yes. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you. And then, Thanks for and letting then... me take my stand on my soapbox, yes, you know, absolutely. 18 years later or whatever. <laughs> and then your favorite pixie. Oh, Chatta. And I'm not trying to be biased, but I just loved her spirit. I thought yes. she was so fun and ridiculous. And I feel like I have an inner Chatta inside of me that guides me like through life for better yes. or for worse. I love that little pixie. Yeah, she's definitely my favorite too. I always thought it was funny that she got paired up with Flora because they're the exact opposites mm-hmm. and that's exactly what she needed. <laughs> they were perfect. Maybe that's why when you said favorite pixie, I said Flora. Maybe it's because my chat yeah, was the, the counterparts for yeah, sure. I was yeah. always and also because I'm a farmer and Flora, I just love, you know, the, yes. the, the plant life. It's a good <sighs> thing. Love it. Love it. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Rapid fire. So <laughs> no, much for that. <laughs> no, I love it. Thank you so much um, for <laughs> indulging uh, us in those. Um, we are going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to dive even deeper into the characters that Ooh. Karen Tackett played in the Poor Kids dub of Wings Club. So don't go anywhere. <laughs> If you're enjoying this episode of the Wix Forever podcast, follow the show on your favorite streaming platform so that you're notified when new episodes are released. And we are back with Karen Tackett, the original four kids voice actress for Stella and hey. Darcy and hey. Chatta and our favorite pumpkin girl, Myrta. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Myrta. So many iconic voices from one voice actress. Almost too good to be true. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so much fun. Oh, man. I was actually speaking with another friend of mine um, and I mentioned to her that uh, you voiced Darcy as well as Stella in the four kids. Mm-hmm. And we were just in awe of like the absolute range that you have to go from Stella to Darcy. (laughs) Like Stella's this outgoing, bubbly, you know, higher register Mm -hmm. as, you know, and then Darcy's this very seductive, low register voice. Like, Mm -hmm. I mean, not to mention the performances that you did with Myrta and Chatta. I mean, do you have like, you know, a favorite part of like voicing each of these characters? Like, you know, what, what was like your favorite, like unique parts of, of voicing each of these? Wow. Well, I think that, uh, first of all, being able, being given the freedom to create and find those voices uh, for myself was a huge gift. I think that a lot of times voice actors nowadays just get, just uh, oftentimes talk like their own voices and 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 don't really um use as much affectation as some of more the more old school looney tunes you know uh you know voice actors who used to provide so many different types of voices to 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 different characters you know i would often hear so many different roles and go that's one person once you would look up who actually voiced these characters and so i was raised on all of that and like jim henson's muppets and things like that and i was constantly mimicking those voices so these um <clears throat> these roles in in wings club were sort of like the first time i i felt like i had permission as a professional to really explore these different ranges in the voice yeah. and as an actor and as a singer um the voice is really it's really a, a very it's a very unique instrument, you know, it's not like we can change our strings or go by a new horn, you know, this is these vocal cords are all we have to work with. So really figuring out the placement of the voices 
physically in my in my face and in my head, along yeah. with, you know, attaching them to the emotions. And and, and uh, that was a fascinating experience. You really learn a lot about yourself as a voice actor when you really just dive in and explore these different voices. And but with Stella, I think she might be my favorite just because she was the first one that I got to, uh, that I got hired to do, you know, it was like, you're yeah. definitely going to be Stella. And I, I started off with her. Um, she just sort of had this different way about her. I just didn't know which way she was going to go. And as the season progressed, she just became more and more her, her, her volume, her octave range went up just a little bit and her yeah. sass, you know, went up just a little bit. And I feel like yes. Anthony and I really paralleled each other with, the, you know, cause he was creating the lines per episode and I was creating, you know, her voice inflection per episode. So I think we just had a lot of fun with, yeah. with Stella because she grew. And at one point they were like, okay, pull her back. Because at one point I was just in the rafters, you know, you just had to bring her in there. There's even one episode where I, I was reviewing these episodes and I was like, oh yeah, that's, that's around the time that Anthony was like, you're, you're shrieking Karen, <laughs> like just, just bring her down, you know, find, find the meaty spot. <laughs> so, uh, so I think that Stella is probably my favorite only because Darcy, Murda, and Chata, they, they started where they were and they stayed where they were. Uh, yeah. You know, Stella had really had a huge arc of growth, not just in her, yes. in her voice and the way she was portrayed, but her character as well. Oh, yeah, of. absolutely. Yeah. And, and I 100% agree. And I think that that's why I gravitated towards Stella so much as a, as a kid. And even now, like, I mean, little, you know, like 10 year old Lola just fashioning like all of her personality after Stella, <laughs> after your Stella, you know, like, so um, funny. I, I wanted we all to have be, a little Stella in us. <laughs> yes. I wanted to be, I mean, I'm, you know, now like the designated extrovert in every friend group, you know, because oh, of yeah. characters oh, like Stella. That. And <laughs> That's great. So, yeah. So it really like helped a very awkward, you know, like elementary middle school kid to like, mm -hmm. you know, find her own voice so to speak and you know like absolutely so don't yeah. be afraid to speak your piece and and then also also what i love about stella is she's also vulnerable she and she doesn't it, she listens when people finally check her you know yes. they just yeah. kind of let her go for a really long time before they check her you You're know like, but when all they, right time to yeah you know, tolerate 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 stop it <laughs> and uh, and <laughs> you know, and then she she really opens herself up and she learns, you know, mm -hmm. and I think that's just such a great model for not just Stella, but for that group of girls, mm -hmm. you know, as it as it is, because, you know, growing up and in school, cliques are tough, you oh. know, and and girl groups in particular are really can be really, really, uh, yeah. you know, ruthless. And sometimes, you know, we we fall in and out of, you know, groups of friends and sometimes we can feel really alone. And it's nice to have like an example of like a group of friends that they don't always get along. And sometimes they don't even it's like, why is this person? Why does this person hang out with us? Yes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but like but somehow you love her and she's like yeah. that, you know, she's a part of the family, you know, mm -hmm. and we have that in our families as well. And so I just love that. I think the Winx Club models that really well. And with Stella, yeah. it's like she's constantly forgiven. She's just just a mess in a dress just, yes you know, and but she's so loved and she has that space to just grow it's so nice yes. yeah absolutely I, I I love that about Stella too um and and looking at I mean the contrast like Darcy there is an episode um in season and we're about to go over it in the podcast um in mm -hmm. season one episode five where Darcy turns herself into Stella Mm -hmm. which oh, now yes. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. so it's That's so right. funny because when like the big reveal happens it literally goes from Darcy's voice to Stella or from Stella's <laughs> voice to Darcy's voice and I'm sitting there going like what the uh -huh. heck, Karen? You know, like that's so wild. <laughs> so fun. Those were such great times. I mean, yes. I want to say I should probably have kept going with voice out, you know, voice acting. It's just something I fell into. But wow, that yeah. I mean, that was a test of of all of the skills. There was actually I remember there was one episode even where there was a scene. I don't remember which season it was, but it was like all of the voices were in the scene to yes. at once. And it was like, all right, Karen, you ready? Just bang, ba bang, ba bang, ba bang. And it was amazing that I didn't have, you know, issues. <laughs> Afterwards, just walking around town muttering and all these voices to myself but <laughs> if i did in new york city nobody would have probably noticed but right uh... yeah yeah 
but it was great. A great way to develop oh. some serious skills. Man, yeah. that was a fun experience. For the first season, mm-hmm. you voiced Stella Darcy and Myrta. And Myrta, mm-hmm. I mean, that that oh. is a fan favorite character for yes. sure. I mean, clearly. Like, you we know, have. <laughs> I love Myrta, too. I should have said her in the rapid, not so rapid fire that I. <laughs> You're good. You're good. Um, no, she. And and the fact that, I mean, it's, it's just such a her character, even though it is a very, I mean, comparatively to the other characters in the show, a small role. It is just so transformative and and accepting. And the fact that mm-hmm. like Myrta feels out of place and she's looking for belonging and clearly mm-hmm. she's not in that and then right. when she finds it and she feels you know like an outsider probably not only just from the community she came from but also to where she was going to because mm-hmm. where she was going to there was no one like her you right. know and so it's just such a beautiful like picture of like acceptance and accepting of like yourself and mm-hmm. and i we love Myrta. she's oh, our favorite Myrta. pumpkin girl <laughs> i just love Myrta so much she's so like and she's such a generous soul too mm-hmm. she's so vulnerable and authentic and generous and she's a good witch and i love yeah. that that they even introduced that as a possibility you know in that yes. series they didn't just yeah. make it you know, so black and white, and so this cut and dry. Yes. This is bad. This is good. You know, it, it it really, and even in those times when like sort of the leaders of the schools would work together to like sort of <laughs> battle some outside force, it was like, okay, right. yeah. we're all we're all family here. <laughs> yeah, times, exactly. You know? But and Murda, there was nobody better to exemplify that than Murda. You know, she was yeah. just somebody that had a great heart, and like they broke through all those stereotypes and yes. all those you know preconceived notions about each other, and yeah. and wound up being super close friends that she's such a she's an awesome character i'm yeah, gonna make and- a shirt i'm gonna shirt can i buy a shirt want- i'll buy a shirt yeah <laughs> awesome. totally buying a shirt. i'll send you a shirt i mean <laughs> yay yay oh yeah totally i'll be like everyone buy your murder shirt <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I love. Yeah. And like what a concept to even like tackle in 2004. I mean, right? that is early, you know, mm-hmm. like in the 2000s to tackle yep. such a large topic and a kid's show. And I right. that's one of the things that I loved about Wings Club is that it didn't dumb down anything for its audience and it didn't it definitely did not. Yeah, it didn't that's like for sure. It didn't insult the intelligence of its younger viewers, you know, right. Um, Absolutely. And, Thank and you I love for it. saying that. I really, <laughs> yeah. I agree with you because it could have been easy to like look at some pretty scantily clad fairies and be like, okay. Because I mean, there yeah. was a second where we were appealing mostly to like junior high males <laughs> 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 in in like the ratings. It was like, hmm. yeah. but I, but you know. I think we leveled out after a while, but I, yeah. there was some really great content. Like every single episode had like a really great, it, you know, not that it was like a moral, but it really had a great no, understory yeah. to it, I think. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. For sure. Oh, good talk. <laughs> um, <laughs> good talk. <laughs> You're listening to the Winx Forever podcast. How does it feel or how does it make you feel knowing that your versions of all these characters um, were the introduction for so many people, so many American Weeks fans like myself, um, to this franchise growing up? I think that it continues to blow my mind. I I remember it, you know, when we when it was happening, it, it was great to hear about you know, reviews and, and fan, you know, forums and things like that. And, and I think I wasn't as heavily tapped into social media or the internet because things that, you know, weren't as social media driven at that point, um, oh, at yeah. that time, but, yeah. uh, as, and then I, I remember sort of, you know, it, them, them saying they weren't going to renew the wings club and I sort of let it go. And then later on, I like saw an advertisement for it and I was like, wait, what? Mm-hmm. And I, And I looked at it and I remember feeling very torn. I'm going to be completely podcast honest with you because I was kind of like, wait, what? (laughs) Like it was definitely, it was like excited, but wait, you know, at the same time. And then I kind of was, you know, watching the program and I was like, okay, I'm glad that it's continued. I'm glad that it's continued. I'm sad that we didn't know 
anything about it. Like, right. you know, any of the, you know, initial <sighs> characters or anything. But, you know, it's the same as any theater production or anything in show business. It's like mm-hmm. they'll do multiple productions of Hello, Dolly or Gypsy or Rent or whatever. Yeah. And there's no guarantee that they're going to use the same people in every single production. But I definitely had this very torn feeling of like, that was just the first time I saw it redone. And then yes. as it kept getting redone, <laughs> I had no choice but to be like celebratory and be like, are you kidding me? This is like amazing. Like, I can't believe that. And then like, even with the most recent, like there's like a live action waste um, club that's Netflix, happening. Yes. I was like watching it. <laughs> totally watched it and I even watched it with like free of judgment with a totally open mind I had a couple That's of people great. contact me like on Instagram that were fans of the of the early days of the Winx Club and they were like can you tell me what you think of this that and the yeah. other thing and I was just kind of like I was so uh diplomatic in my response because I really just at this point because it's been so long <laughs> I mean maybe if it was 2004 and right. they were coming out with a live action thing <laughs> as I'm recording the 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 like janky Italian import version <laughs> like, or whatever maybe I'd have a different attitude about it but you know as I am 45 with a lot of gray hair and, and like seeing these youngins portray these roles I get it like I totally get them shape-shifting characters shape-shifting yeah. storylines and I mean mm-hmm. you know it's sort of like they did in Riverdale I used to be like a yeah. big fan of like old school Archie comics and yes. then like this big Riverdale thing came out and I was like oh my god and then I watched it and I was like wait what happened? You're like, like, what? Huh? Wait, yes. they all have this, the names. I'm seeing the names. <laughs> That's all I'm seeing. And then there's yeah. like cults and all kinds of other things oh. happening. But like, yes. you know, it's the same thing with Winx Club these days. And it's called Creative License. And I guess it's mm-hmm. the same that's that's respectable like to a certain yeah. a point I, I i enjoyed watching that live action series so much i haven't seen the last episode i don't know why i kind of let it go oh, I was like, the last episode is i will warn you it's good it is, is a it? jerker maybe that's yes. why it's, it's so good I, yeah i <sighs> i was ready to not like it and i yes. sat down and i was like i'm on board i'm fully on board <laughs> It just kind of draws you in a little. It draws you in. It's <laughs> yeah. really interesting. I haven't seen a lot, a lot like it. So I say yeah. keep it up. It's it's actually like an honor. It's an honor to think that, you know, something that <laughs> something that started with Anthony and 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 me and like this room of just like try this, blah 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 blah. blah. And I remember being like. <laughs> so weirded out that like chatta i couldn't get the sound to happen unless i did this weird thing with my like hands <laughs> and my face <laughs> and i'll tell you those voices last and permeate through my household today it's so unfortunate for my family That's members like actually it's, amazing <laughs> they haven't died like i talk in voices to every little thing people would think i'm so strange if they didn't you know no but i i think it's I'm so grateful to have had that opportunity and I hope it continues. Yes. You know, I guess it means like that means that it was good, you know, that's, so that's, yeah. that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I know. I mean, it was, it was hilarious little, I don't even know how old I was, maybe 12, 13 when the show um, lost its, its licensing privileges with four kids. And so mm-hmm. um, I was devastated. I was so yeah. upset and I remember four kids had marketed it as like the series finale. And I was like, this can't be, mm-hmm. this can't be real, I you know? know? And so, and so then I like petitioned, I had like an online petition going. <gasps> you and, and, like, did? It was hilarious. I had like 200 plus signatures, sent it to Rainbow, the production company in Italy. I and you. like, <laughs> I was so a go getter at 13. <laughs> go get them. You were like, this will not stand. Yeah. I will take action. <laughs> I love and then, you. That's fantastic. Yeah. So then when they did renew it with Nickelodeon in like, you know, 2009, 2010, I was like, can we not? I, I take it all back. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm just kidding. This right? is not what I wanted. <laughs> JK. And why did they go back to the beginning and do it like from the gate? Like, I was like, why couldn't you have just continued it from where it was and not act like we didn't do it right the first time? <laughs> and that's and that's what kills me as an original Winx Club like fan growing up with it. And like, oh, my gosh, it just kills me because, yeah, like it was yeah. phenomenal. You guys did an amazing job. And it. Mm, yeah, it I was inter- you know, opinions. I mean, no offense to the to, I'm, I, I'm so psyched for the opportunity for the the that cast of voice yeah. actors. And I think that it's great when anything new is created out of something. So, you know, yeah. bo- you know, blessings and wonderful and congratulations to them for all the creative work that right. they did. 
I just was kind of like, huh? huh? About it. Yes. <laughs> And also, you know, my phone was right there, not ringing. <laughs> so. I know it was it was such an odd time. Well, you you get the honor of like being in what the, is now referred to in the fandom as the golden era of Wings Club, which is oh my that gosh, 2004 that's so awesome. to 2009. <gasps> you know, Could somebody draw the fairies as like the golden girls, but oh be like the Wings Club. Could we? Be the golden girls. I mean, girls, we can fairies? absolutely make that happen. Let's make that happen. <laughs> yes, that's fantastic. The golden era. I'm learning yes. so much from you. I learned what a specialist is. How dare I? I'm going to contact Anthony after I, this episode and apologize. Be like, obviously, I never read the male parts in the in, script. In your defense, it has been 18 years since Thank the show you. aired. So, Thank you. My mind is gone. <laughs> no, you're, you're absolutely good. <laughs> And in in the four kids dub, I think that it was less referred to as specialists um, in the first season, and they were more referred to as heroics and bravery. Yes, um, heroics and bravery. Yes. I remember that yeah, one because mm-hmm. Stella would re- refer to them as the H and B boys, um, which was hilarious, <laughs> right? And that was sort of a little bit before everything was like becoming um, like abbreviated. hyphenated and abbreviated. Yeah, yeah. constantly. I love it. So funny. Stella's such a trendsetter. She oh, knew she honestly. was. Yeah, ahead of her time. <laughs> I've loved that candid conversation. Thank you so much yes. for like having that conversation with me. Yes. I've never even had that conversation with like the other creatives because by the time it happened, we had all just kind of moved on. You know, Anthony yeah. does still does, you know, he's still a fantastic director. We actually worked together after the fact and he directed a musical that I wrote and he was oh, wow. amazing at that too. Like he's yeah. just, I can't say enough amazing things about him. He should be That's on the show. That's amazing. Oh, yeah. I love, I love that. Well, you, you mentioned that you guys had, you know, like this, like you guys knew as you were recording the Winx Club series that um, it was an import from Italy and that um, you guys were doing a redub kind of um, mm-hmm. restructure of the show. Um, but did you have had did you have any inkling as to like the large international fan base that Winx Club Not has held over the years? <laughs> Not at all. I had no idea until maybe like a couple of years later and maybe even later than that. It was. Yeah. It was a slow burn, it, it, you know, it, but that's great. I think that's great because then at the time it, it didn't get into any of our heads or anything. We were yeah, just, you know, yeah. we were just having some fun doing a new thing, you know, and right. and it it seemed like such a raw kind of way to do it, too. It didn't seem yes. like it was a huge deal, you know, and yeah. so and to, to really to learn that it was was great. And then when they started doing things like saying, you know, OK, we're going to do this uh you're going to voice this doll. You're going to voice this, you know, yes. video game. You know, yes. it was like, what? It, it That was dreams coming true. You know, who knew that Absolutely. that would, that was like sort of something you would dream about as a kid. It's so, yes. such oh, great opportunity. I, I definitely had the Stella sensational doll. Um, oh, st- I still have it. it. <laughs> so. Oh, that's so great. <laughs> Which was oh, funny. I because... don't have the sensational doll. <laughs> really? Yeah, I didn't get it in her voice. <laughs> I don't. I have this one. I brought it out to show you. Oh I have this gosh. is like the first one and yes. it doesn't even have I don't know what the heck it has. It has like it has a DVD in it, but it yes. doesn't. It magically does not light up anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a what a time. Don't look up how much that is on eBay. Do not do it because. It's, oh, that's funny. It's worth really? a lot. It's worth. So oh, much. my gosh. The, the Wings Club Mattel doll community is absolutely insane and that doll is probably worth like five or six hundred dollars in box. oh my gosh you gotta so, be kidding me it's, oh, it's absolutely it <laughs> oh that's great she absolutely can hang on wild. to it how well, i used to have the other ones but i did give them to raven when she was a toddler <laughs> and all yeah. of their body parts ended up strewn across oh, yes. various parts of my apartment <laughs> of course of course be- as they do you know as I mean, they do i i'm still kicking myself because i had you know all the gen one like you know season one dolls and of course they're oh. all heavily played with and like have like oh their yeah. little bendy arms don't bend anymore and of course <laughs> Of course, all of their oh. hair is like you know, but they're well loved, and so of course, that's what matters. Oh, I used to feel so bad for my friends that whose parents wouldn't let them open the toys because they'd be like, it, "It'll be worth something someday." Yeah. Now I'm like, no, I don't feel bad for you anymore. Yes, Good on you. Yeah. <laughs> they're I like, know, honestly, so worth so much, but that's great. Oh, so funny. that's a great feeling too that it's yeah. worth something. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna look it up they, now that you said that. <laughs> they are cherished um for sure wow that's so oh, yeah. funny 
Oh, Good well, to this, know. Is, this is so fun. <laughs> Getting to introduce you to the, I know. Like... I'm learning so much from you. This is great. <laughs> Incredible. There is another English dub besides the Nickelodeon dub that was dubbed okay. by a, um English dubbing company in um, Canada called mm-hmm. Cineloom. Mm. And that is the more popular English version across like overseas um oh. and it's what it's the english version that that other people overseas got um, oh scandalous yes so wow it's, it's really funny because um the four kids version it does take a lot of liberties it reworks a lot of scenes it really it edits and cuts out some scenes that are maybe like not as important and doesn't progress the story along right which is hilarious because um because the cinelume canadian dub is very by the book very exactly really yes i can't wait to watch it (laughs) and so i've never even heard of it it's actually it's absolutely wild um so i 1000 percent like oh i'm so watching i caution you because the the voice acting and i don't know if this is like and i'm not trying to knock like the actresses or anything like in that dub because it's probably direction but like It's a little rough. <laughs> it, uh, we in in this season of the podcast, we are going through um like episode by episode and um watching the Rye English, which is what we call the Cineloom dub, and uh-huh. the Four Kids version back to back, um okay. and comparing them. Um, okay. And the general like consensus is that the Four Kids version is better, which that is my plan oh. all along is to introduce all of my European friends to the Four Kids version. Oh, that makes me so happy. <laughs> Oh, so. I definitely tend to stay away from, I, I don't, if I, this one, like, <laughs> Winx Club fan wrote to me once and said, and this is, I want to say recently, like, <gasps> pandemic recent. Oh, wow. And said, um, hey, I, you know, I saw that you're on Instagram, and I just wanted to say that I really like your Stella, and don't you listen to anything that any of the other people say. And I was like, oh. You're like, what did the other people say? <laughs> well, <laughs> Well, thank you. And I won't. And and so I was like, well, that one guy liked me. So neat. <laughs> and since then, haven't really forayed into the land of trying to see what other people thought. Um, that is absolutely phenomenal. I can't believe they told you that. Yep. It was, it was awesome. I love oh people. My God. People were yeah. so great. You never know, like what it's so funny. Even like theater fans, it's amazing what they'll like write and ask, and I'll be like, "Wow, that was some blatant stuff." Good. Um, I appreciate that. You just that. came right, right out there with that just one. Right out, <laughs> just right at the gate. Good for you. I'm answering that. Oh That's my good. god, that yep. is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow what a time well karen thank you so much for being on the show today i really appreciate Absolutely. you taking the time oh, it has been so much fun <laughs> i really can't thank you enough i could do this forever thank you yay wow. winks forever winks <laughs> forever yes um is there anything that you want to tell the viewers that you are working on currently i know that you've got um kind of like a lot of different creative projects going i definitely i think if there was something that was connected to winks that i would that i would say that i'm doing it is um that musical that i talked about that anthony moved to direct is called yeah. woman in three and uh and it was written in 2003 and debuted in 2004 on in new york city under his direction with a whole slew of uh, Broadway talent and years and years later it's so funny that this is the year that you've asked me to do this interview because this is the year that we're finally making the album of that musical so um, we're in the process uh, of doing that right now and uh, and so that's that's the only thing that I would really bring to people's attention and the other thing I would say to the viewers is just thank you so much like it's it's so heartwarming and so uplifting to know that the show was loved and it was an honor to do and uh, and I know that it gives my daughter a lot of joy too so that means the world to me. Oh, good. Thank you so much. I super Thank appreciate you it. so much. Lola Valentine, you rock. I freaking love you. This has been awesome. <laughs> Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode of the Winx Forever podcast, be sure to follow or subscribe to the show on your preferred streaming platform. Join in on the conversation when you follow at Winks Forever Podcast on social media. The theme for Winks Forever Podcast is the song She Makes Magic by Big Wild. 
The theme for the Winx Forever podcast is the song She Makes Magic by Big Wild. The theme for Winx Forever podcast is the song She Makes Magic by Big Wild. That was perfect. It's like you do this professionally. 